All right. Well, today, sadly, is our last day. Well, I said sadly, but <laughs> of our um, logic paradigm, right? And we have an exam on Thursday, is that right? And I think I got your, did you get notified? I got your homeworks back for you today. It's early this afternoon. All right, so um, I guess what you would like to know is what is the exam going to be like? So I'll tell you. <clears throat> it's going to be in, um, you know, the structure of it is going to be very much like the exam that we did for the functional paradigm. In the functional paradigm, we learned um, scheme and uh, on the very first page, we had a whole bunch of, it, it had the, the read eval print loop. And there were lots of questions that we could ask about how the read eval print loop thing works. And it's the exact same idea for Prolog, because Prolog has, you know, you've got the, um, the database where you have the rules and you have your specifications in the database, and then you have the queries. So the first page on the exam is going to be a multi-part question, you know, probably A, B, C, D, E, F, G. And basically what I'm going to do is I will um, write out a query, and is all you have to do is say what, what the result is. All right? And the, the items that you, all of the, um, all of the, um, expressions, all the queries that you have to be familiar with, are all the ones from the homeworks and the examples. So, and I've posted the, um, all the notes for all the chapters. I think it's chapters 1 through 6, is that right? So the notes, chapters 1 through 6, are all there, and basically those notes are what I did in class going through and us, you know, s revealing, you know, seeing what the problem was, see if we can come up with the code, you know. So, um, and, and, and in a lot of those notes, I have demo all these queries. And so if you go through those queries, I think it's a, I think you have a resource there that is a good review resource. If you want to go through and, and go through those queries and say, hmm, I wonder what this is. And then type it out and, you know. And maybe what we'll do, uh, we can do a little review today, and I think maybe that's the kind of thing we should do to kind of refresh our memory about how those queries worked. All right? And then the rest of the exam is going to be right out of the exercises, the, um, you know, the predicates. You know, we're asking you to write some predicates. So I'll, I'll ask you to write some of the predicates from uh, our exercises. <clears throat> and so those will be either from the exercises or they will be from the example predicates that we did in class. So that's, you can just go right to the notes and see which ones we did. You can go right to the exercises to see what we did for the exercises, and those are that. But now, in addition, there will be the last question or two, and those are all pretty short, right? It's not like, I mean, I'm not sure what the longest, it's amazing how short all of these are, yeah? I mean, it's really short, but I mean, there's really a lot packed into it. But they're all very, fairly short. But um, I will reserve, I, I'm almost, you know, 100% sure that the last question or two will be a question on, of something that you haven't done yet. Okay, so to see if you can apply the principles that we learned in Prolog to a new problem that you haven't seen yet. So you can expect that, you know, sort of near the end. So I think if you know how to do the, if you refresh yourself on all the queries, you know, all the, all the predicates that are built in, uh, and also how to do, you know, all the exercises and the examples in the book, at least from the notes, then you'll have most of the exam will be, you'll have with no surprises. It'll only be the last question or two that might be different. Okay. So, 
any questions about the format of the exam? So all the priorities and the first page, those will be ones that we've already done through. Will there be like any uh, No, the queries on the first page, I wouldn't ask you a, well, I mean, it might not be exactly identical, but it'll be the same query. I mean, I might use a different list. You know, like if I query it with a list, it might not be the exact same list, but it'll be the exact same query. So if you know, if, if, if you can predict the results of, of, of all the queries that we did, you, you, that should be fine. It might not be with the, instead of list A, B, C, D, I mean, you know, I don't know, what, I don't know about the list, but anyway. But you need to know all of the, oper all of the operations, all of the um, predicates that we've done lately, too. You know, all the way up through Univ and Functor and uh, what was the last one we did? did, we, did we did args, is that right? And we did bag of. Yeah. Now, uh, so if you go based on the web page, I was out sick, so we didn't get to the last assignment. So if you go on the web page, it's all of the assignments up to, but not including the last one. All right. So I'm obviously am not going to ask you for the stuff that we didn't cover in class. Okay. Are, is everybody good on what to expect? And then we won't need to video record Thursday. And then Friday, we're going to start our third and last paradigm, which will be the concurrency paradigm. So I think it's kind of like, um, it's going to be a shift back, yeah. It's not, you know, <laughs> when, we, when, we, when we went from the, when we went from the, um, from the object-oriented to the functional paradigm, that was kind of a big shift. And when we went from the functional to the, this logic paradigm, this, uh, that was a pretty big shift, I think. I think that was probably the biggest paradigm shift. Now you're going to be back in kind of more of familiar territory when we talk about concurrency. We're going to use some conventional languages like Java. <laughs> so anyway. All right, so does anybody have any questions about any of the material, uh, any of the concepts or anything? Because I thought, I don't have a plan for what to do today, but I thought if you, I mean, we could either quit class early, we could all go home, or if you want, we could, I could, you know, I've got some notes, I've got my notes here, I, we could, you know, maybe go through and try to re do some review. What's your pleasure? You, you do want to review? Okay. So I don't have a plan for how, you know, this is not going to be very structured. We're just, we'll just kind of fish around and we'll start reviewing some of this stuff. Okay, so let's do that. Okay, we are recording now. Now what I was thinking, you know, uh, just a few minutes before I came to class, I think we... There's no sense in going all the way back to chapter one. You know, in chapter two, when we were first learning how matching worked. I mean, on some of these, I think that would be too trivial by now. I think the kind of the, the hard stuff came at about chapter three. I think that's maybe where we should start. Okay. Because that chapter three, actually, I even have a slide here. Here, let's, let's start reviewing here in chapter three. So here's a slide. Lists in prologue. Do you remember what the functor for a list, what is a list? What is this, this list, square bracket, and tennis, Tom, skiing? What actually is that? It's really the functor dot, parentheses, and, and then the second parameter is a what? Well, it's actually not a list, it's another what? It's another functor. Are you, is everybody, are you with me? And then boom, boom, boom. So this is really, and then, so, so um, the dot, what is the arity of dot? It's two. Are you with me? And then the, the first one is this atom, and the second one is a list. And so it's, you could actually write, if, if I don't want to type this in, but if we type this in this way, and if, if we said a, capital X match d, quote dot quote left paren and comma quote dot quote left paren tennis, blah, blah. If we did that, it would come out X is, it would, it would 
printed out like this. But this is really just an abbreviation for all that. Okay. <clears throat> so let's, let's take a look uh, at some, see if we can, here let's, let's do, uh, we'll start with chapter three. And let's do CH3. Now, you know, the reason you guys can't do this abbreviation here is because your, usually when you do this, your file doesn't start with a letter. So, because I have you put the, your two-digit number in front of the file, and that's why you have to actually write out consult. So that just happens, it's just the convention for the file name there. Okay. So let's just do a few. I'm not gonna, we won't do them all. Let me just try to pick a few here. Let's, let's do one like this. A, here's one that we did. A, B, and then, okay, so that's list, that's the list of the list. Well, okay, we'll do a little warm up. Let's do capital list, capital X, B, capital Z, match, um, a, capital Y, capital, C, or lowercase c. So predictions here. Right. Okay, so that was an easy one. How about this? A, uh, list, oops, list, list, A, B, and then C, and then match, um, Variable X, variable Y. Any, anyone here? Prediction? Yeah. X matches with AB and Y matches with C, right? And now how about this one? Now how about this vertical bar? How about X match and then uh, Maybe this is too easy. A, and then vertical bar, and then list, B, C, D. Maybe we should graduate. So what will this be, period? Hmm? Yeah, just the list A, B, C, D is correct. And um, how about if you do, um, let's, let me just skip down a few. Let me see what's going, what would be interesting here. How about X match, um, let's do um, A, vertical bar, and then the uh, list, B, C, D. So what about this? Oh, wait, is that the one I just did? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's the one I just did. Duh. <laughs> okay. How about this, um, X match, suppose we do A, B, C, and then vertical bar, and then, um, oh, good point, X match, A, B, C, and then um, vertical bar, Oh, wait a minute, where am I? Oh, and then list D, E, F. What do you think? Do you remember how this worked? <laughs> what? Yes. Do you remember that? You can have more than one. It's a more flexible. It's a more flexible matching than just the the single element for the car for the first. Say it again. Ask. Isn't there a way that you can make it work hard in brackets? Where. 
you want to do a query where something comes out in brackets. Uh, actually, I'm not here. Let's do let's do a few. Let's do a few. Maybe this will maybe this will answer your question. Let's do capital X and then comma and then capital Y and then vertical bar capital Z. Okay, and let's match that with ABC. So now how will this, what about this? C, uh, Z is the list with C, right? Actually that might be, that might be, does that answer you, actually does that answer your question? Mm -hmm. If we, if we do this, suppose we do this, first, rest, Oops, rest, match, A, B, C, D. So what would this be? B, C, D, yeah. Yes, you can, like we saw in that one before. And how about, um, how about this? How about X? capital Y, capital Z, vertical bar, and then capital A, oops, capital A, and then suppose we have, we try to match this with um, ABC, lowercase ABC. What happens here? Does this succeed or fail? Oh, we have a difference of opinion here, a succeed and a, it will succeed with capital A being the empty list. Yeah. Yeah. Are we good? No. Oh, well, maybe this is maybe this this is a good review. On the other hand, if we did it like this, remember we did this. If we did it like this, now what's going to happen? This one's going to fail because there's not enough. Okay, so that's, is everybody good? Do you remember this? This was a surprising one. X, comma, Y, and then vertical bar, and then Z. So all of these are variables, right? Now, and what we're saying is A, lowercase a, vertical bar, W. This was surprising. The obvious one is what? Yeah, the obvious one is that X, X equals A. Yeah. W is the list Y bar Z. So it actually even unifies in that case. Okay. So now, um, now how? So here would be here would be one that I could ask you. How about third element? So suppose here we want th third element. So suppose we want third element. Um, and if I do A B. Oh, sorry, third element, parentheses, and then the list, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and then I do what? And so what, what we want to have instantiated is we want what to be the third element. So what should be what? C. So how do you write third element? Well, it's already up here. Okay, it's a single, so do you see how a third element is written here? The third element, in order for, in order for this to to match what has to, ha what has to happen. It's just a single, it's not even a rule. It's just a single fact. You see how, the, how it works? This is the first element, this is the second element, and this is the third element, and then bar, and then this is the rest of the list, and this is the same variable as this. So that's why, that's how what gets instantiated to C. Does everybody see how that works? And then let's read, and everybody knows how member works, right? If we say, now member is built in. If we say, if we say member um, C and A, B, C, D, E, okay, that, that's true, okay? And so we want to do, because that's built in, we want to do my member. So what's, so, 
So suppose we want to do, instead of, you know, to see that this actually does the same thing, let's do my member. And if we do my member, it works the same as member, the built-in. And then how would we program my member? So what's the base case up here? <coughs> yeah, and it doesn't matter what the, what the rest of the list is. If X matches with X, that matches. And it doesn't matter what this is. And so that succeeds. So my member succeeds. But if this X does not match the first element of this list, then this one fails and we go to the next rule. So what is this rule? Yeah, X is somewhere in, th in the tail. So does everybody remember how to program that? Could you program my member? Okay. Now, how about this one? This one was a really, this one was a, a central one, wasn't it? What is, what happens if we do conk, if we do conk, um, uh, ABC, the example we did was A, a, B, C, and one, two, three, and L, and L. So what, how, do, how does this conch work? A, B, C, L is the what? Yeah, L is the, the last, the last argument is the concatenation of the first argument and the second argument. So here L is this. So do you remember how to write conch? That's Let's review this. Actually, before we review it, let's take a look. Figure 3.2 is the concatenation of lists. And do you remember when we struggled with this the very first time? Now, how, so how did this work? L, what, what, is, what does this show us? That, that this X, <coughs> What's, what's going on here? What is L3? So X is the first element of L1. Of L1. It's also the first element of the concatenated list. Yes. If X, yes. If X is the first element of L1. <clears throat> then it's the first element of the Then it's the first element of the concatenated list. But, but the thing of it is, is if it's the first element of the concatenated list, then what's the relationship between L1 and L2 and L3? Yes, L3 is the concatenation of L1 and L2. So in order for X to be the concatenation, in order... Yeah. <laughs> okay, so how, did we, so how did we write that? Do you remember how to... How to so what's the base case? So here's the specification. Conk L1, L2, L3. L3 is a concatenation of L1 and L2. So what's the base case? Of what? Right. If you concatenate anything with the empty list, you get L. Well, the way we did it, well, you might be able to do it the other way around, but then I think you might, the, let's think about that in a minute. So if you, concat, if you concatenate the empty list with L, you get L, right? And then what's the next thing? If you concatenate what? In other words, in other words, X concatenated with L three, or sorry, X X as the car of L three, is the concatenation of X as the first of L one and L two. If what? Yes, if conk L one L two L three. Now, you had an interesting question. You said, could we do it the other way around? I think you probably could, right? Yeah, well, Instead, the base case, but, yeah. but, but what we're doing here is 
this, you see this is peeling the X off of this one. I, so I think it would be a different rule. Yeah. What would it be? And, and instead of being conch, the empty list LL, it would be conch, what you said was what? L, L the empty list L. But then... You have to be peeling. But then you couldn't have like the first... Like if you were um, making progress toward termination on the second parameter, mm -hmm. you wouldn't be able to compare the first one you wouldn't be able to say the first one of an encapsulated list is the same as the first of the second list, which is not the first. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, so that, actually wouldn't that actually wouldn't work. Interesting. Okay. Now, how about, now let me see, what was the difference between member and member one? Um, See, I'm looking at my notes here. Did we do my, wait, didn't we just do my member? Wait, yeah. what is, oh, I remember what we were doing, gonna do with member one. Member one is, is another version of member, but now it's using conch. We can write member using conch. Okay, so member one, XL. So X is a member of L. This is a single rule with conch. Could you do this? Is it going to be member one, XL, if? Or is it going to be? You would um, separate L. Into what? You would separate L into what? Like into a first and a rest, and then member one XL if what? Is that what you would do? No, it says a single rule with conch. Ooh, let's think about this. This is a good review. Say it again. Oh, it can have, yeah, it is a single rule, but it could have uh, and. I mean, it could have more than one goal. I'm not sure if it does, but do you think it does? If what? Well, I don't think we're going to have a recursive call to member one because it's a single rule. Ooh, this is, this is thought-provoking still. Member one, oh, so we didn't peel it off like you said. So member one XL if what? I think, and I think there's got to be more than one goal here though, right? Yeah, now that is a really good question. And it, I'm glad you asked that. The question was, can you like nest concatenations? And the answer is, in this, par that is a big paradigm shift that we had to make when we went here. And the answer is no, because this is not the functional paradigm. What you're thinking, what you're doing when you're, what you're thinking when you do that is, these are like, fun these are like parameters of functions that get evaluated, you know, but they're not. It's unification. These are predicates that get. Yeah. So the answer is no. If you oh now you can think about conking anything with x to get to get a list. So you conk anything with x to get l one. L. Yeah, I think you've got it. So if you conk anything. With well, with with e because X is an element, so conch takes a list. Mm -hmm. So if you conch anything, oh, and this isn't more than one goal. I I I, I led you astray. So if this, yeah. does everybody see how this works? Yes, I think that was a that was an idea that I was, I was thinking like something could be in front of X and like could be after. Oh right, but right. So here, yeah, so what we're saying is if you conk anything, 
with the list that has x as, as the first and anything as the rest, you get L. Yeah, and that works. Okay, let's, let's, demo, let's demo add. Let's do add A, one, two, three, what? Let's do add um, A and the list one, two, three, and then capital W-H-A-T. Okay, so now, um, so add is, is, the arity is three, and up here it says add X, L, L1. L1 is L with X added at the beginning. Add is not really needed because it's, we can write it as a single fact. So here's the, here's the demo. So now, how, can, do you see how to, how to write add as a single fact? How, what, 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 how did, what's true here? Well, it has to be add. When we said add here, and it has to be a single fact, so it's add parentheses something. Yeah, which one is the which one is the bar? The But it's not a it's a fact, it's not a rule. Do are we doing conk? It has to be a single fact, so it's just Yeah, I think it's I think because it's a fact, it's just with add. Is that right? Am I right about this or no? Yeah, everybody knows that we know maybe we should yeah. Difference between a fact and a rule? A fact, yeah, is just period with no if. Yeah as opposed to a rule. So, a, I, it, this says a single fact. I, I don't know, maybe... We, so add X, L, X bar L. Oh, there you go. Add X, L, X bar L. Right. I'm sorry, did you say that at the beginning? Very beginning? <laughs> yeah, good. Good. Does everybody see? So, there adds not actually needed because... Yeah. Okay, now let's do... Let's... let's Take a look at del, delete. Okay, so let's demo del. Okay, so let's do del, and we'll do uh, a, and we'll do del, and for the list, we'll do a, b, a, a. And um, then, capital L, uh, L1, I think is what I did in my notes here. Okay, and so what should, what should L1 be? Oh, you're right, I do. That's not good. Okay, so now what should, thank you. So now what should this be? BAA, but then is there another solution? ABA, and then there's another solution? ABA, and then there's no more. Right? So how would you write that? So L1 is L with element X deleted. It's a base case fact and a recursive rule. Okay, so now we're not using conk. This is just a base case fact and a recursive. So what's the base case fact? If you delete what from what, do you always get what? If you delete anything from the empty list, what do you get? Yes. <clears throat> oh. Actually, there, there, I might ask you to do it a certain way. Like I might say, do this using conch with one rule or something like that. I might, I might, I, th there might be some restrictions on it. Yes, I might. You Just like these. You're doing the are we the okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, okay, okay. The ones that we're doing now, mm -hmm. we, are, we are writing the predicates. So that would not be the fir a first page question. That would be like a second page, second or third page question. Okay, so to, to be to write a predicate to do this. 
and then I might give you a little sample run to make sure you, okay, a sample query, okay. Is everybody good? Okay. Oh, we we missed this one though, didn't we? We we thought. Right. Tail, yeah, yes. It is true that this tail is um, this is this list with this deleted. Are we good? Okay. But now what but now what about if it's not? What about if this doesn't match this? Then what what then what do we have to say? Then, now this one is not the same as this, so it's different. So now we have del x y tail, comma, y tail 1, if what? Well, I don't think we do add. Oh, there you go. Del x tail, well, x tail what? Tail 1, is that what you said? Del x tail tail one. All right, is everybody good? So now let's do. Let's take a look at insert, and we call it x list beer list. Beer list is list with x inserted anywhere. It's a single rule for insert using del. So let's let's illustrate. Um, insert. Where's my insert example? So let's do insert A. Let's do insert A into the list um, 1, 2, 3 and then have L be the, the one that is the list with A inserted. So how can we insert A? Now this isn't just add at the beginning. So now the next example, the next solution is what? Boom, boom, boom. Yeah? So, what did we say here? Um, X, bigger list is list with X inserted anywhere. It's a single rule for insert. There's a single rule for insert using that. So now this one's not a fact, this is a rule. So what will it be? Oh, excellent. Insert X list, bigger list, if delete X bigger list list. Yeah. That's good. That's a paradigm shift. Can you imagine just saying that and then it works? It works like it, like it was supposed to? That's quite amazing. You can see why when Prolog first hit the scene that people saw this and they saw, wow, it works. You just have to say what it does and it'll do it. Here's another one. Member defined in terms of of del. Oh wait, what was the difference between this and the other one? Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, we had done insert here. Yeah, the, here we're doing. Here we're doing. Del. Oh, yeah. Okay, so member defined in terms of del with a single rule. Okay, so what? How, we we did member. What did we do before? Member. Oh, right, 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 right. Oh, yes. Okay, so now this is member defined in terms of del. Okay, so now how, how, can, X be a, how can X be a member of list? If you do what with what? And what is, uh, what is del says that the third one is, the third list is the second list with the first element removed, right? Is that how del works? So what's our, so number two, x list, if what? No, I think once you start going to the x bar, you're talking about, 
you're talking about having it to do a base case, yeah? Hmm? Oh, uh, well, we still got this paradigm. <laughs> this paradigm is a hard one, I mean, in a way. If you delete X from, wait, yeah, can we not, can we not come up with this one? All you guys out there in video land, can you do this? <laughs> hmm. How is it that X can be a member of list? If you do what from what, you get what? If you delete what from what, you get what? So if you delete, yes. If you delete, yes. If you delete X from list, you get anything. If it's not list, yeah, if it's not in the list, it won't, it'll fail. So it will succeed when it is deleted. Oh, well, we had to think about that one. So I guess if you have, when you have the anonymous variable, it's assuming that it's not, that variable is not the same as any of the variables you have. No, it's completely general. It's not assuming anything. No, it wouldn't succeed then. Are you with me? It wouldn't. It. I mean, here, if we put, if we put Dell X list list, that'll never succeed because this would have to be the same as this, right? But if you if you can succeed if you can succeed in deleting X from list giving whatever, then X is a member of list. Okay. See, I, yeah, that's the way to think of it. You see, X is a member of list if you can delete X from list and get whatever. <laughs> see, this paradigm, this, I tell you guys, this way of thinking is a real, this is the biggest paradigm shift this is just a really big paradigm shift. It's just really, this is on the very first day when we talked about worldviews and how you have to th think of it a certain way, this kind of requires a different way of thinking. So even though we've done all these before and we're at, at the review, we still haven't gotten the, you know, the full feeling of the paradigm, I think. But I think this is a good review. I think as we go through this, this, this is a good review. Okay, how about sublist? Let's do uh, let's do some more. <clears throat> My sublist SL. So list S is a sub sublist of list L. This is a single rule with two conch goals. Where conch is three area. So let's do some examples before we see if we can remember how to do this one. So let's do my sublist. And here again, all of these examples are, are, and I'm taking this from the notes that are on the web page. C, D, E, C, D, E, okay, and then uh, A, B, C, D, E, F, A, C, D, E, F, all right? And um, <clears throat> so now, should this succeed or should it fail? That should succeed, so that's true, and it only succeeds once. And if we do my sub list, um, C, D, E, and here we make this C, D, F, this obviously should what? Fail. All right. So how is it that S can be a sublist of L? Well, what has to be true about, what has to be true about concatenating these? If you concatenate what? If you concatenate what? What has to be true about concatenation for this C? Because here we have an A, B. See, here we have the A, B here, right? And we have the F here, 
right? So what has to be what has to be true about the concatenation right here? Look, here's the CD. If you say it again. If you concatenate, if you concat, can, if you concatenate what? Anything with I guess the first of the no, no, no. If you concatenate anything with what? C D E. You get. Uh, well. Yeah, maybe I said it in the wrong. You also, also, if you concatenate this with this, wait. Well, since yeah, two. You concatenate anything with the symbol, so you get a list, and then you, you, you concatenate that list with anything you get. Okay, I think I think you said it right. So if you concatenate anything. Oh, that's not what you said. <laughs> Sorry, but now that we see now that we see the first one, if you, what is this saying? If you concatenate anything, if you concatenate anything with some list, and you get the final one. So now, what are we concatenating here? We're, conca we're concatenating anything with. What is the L2 going to be? It could be, it could be AB. No, no, it's got to be. It's got to, doesn't it have to be this? Doesn't it have to be this? Oh, no, 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 you're right, because it could be anything with L2. Yeah, but which one is it? And what? Oh, you're right. L2. Oh, oh, you're right. Oh, that's a good observation. L2 has to be the last part, doesn't it? So the question is, is it, is it this part? Oh, there you go. Conk S was something in its L2. Let's call it quits. I thought that was, this was a pretty good review. Okay? And we'll see you on Thursday.